Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me is Eris Lieberman, partner with Linklaters to discuss technology innovation in the legal space and how it's transforming how business is done in the industry. Eris, it's great to have you with us. Welcome to Trade Talks. Likewise, thank you for having me. What are the cybersecurity and privacy concerns impacting the legal business and what do companies have to do to protect themselves? Well, chief among concerns nowadays in the news is obviously ransomware. We have seen uh, multiple waves over the last 18 months, uh, increasing in sophistication, increasing in type uh, and in impact. Uh, we recently saw $50 million paid by one company for ransomware. We have seen this impact actual national elements with the Colonial Pipeline, with the meat industry. And so that is chief in one of the concerns that we've seen. Uh, companies need to respond to that. They need to understand uh, what elements that they should have in place to protect. The White House has put out some fantastic guidance about that. New York Department of Financial Services has put out some fantastic guidance about that. And some of those are simple. Uh, Multi-factor authentication for protecting your elements. If you're logging into your systems with a username and password and you don't need anything else, you're not secure enough. You should have uh, some text message sent to your phone or an RSA token or one of these other means. If you're not having your vulnerability patching done every, every month or even more, you're not fixing your errors enough and the hackers are gonna get in. If you don't have new software that detects on your computers anomalous or weird behavior that is not associated with a normal user activity, you're not up to date on the latest technology. So these are things that the government has put out as guidance, which everybody should be following, notwithstanding the fact that it's guidance. If the government's putting it out, it's pretty much table stakes as to what you need to do from a security perspective. Uh, and you need to make sure through risk assessments and audits that that is done across the board because the hackers, they know companies are putting all these steps in and they know that there's one or two computers that have been left unsecured by accident intentionally to create some easy path for administrators, all of these different options, and they're finding those and using that as a way to get into the company. In addition, companies, executives, they need to prepare. So uh, just like we talk about preparing for uh, basketball games and sports, preparing for presentations, they need to prepare. So aside from having the technology in place, they need to have muscle memory. What are they gonna do if they have a cyber incident? How are they gonna respond to that cyber incident? Who's gonna make the call on whether you are paying a ransomware actor? And how are you gonna work with your third parties in order to respond to that ransomware incident and to work through that ransomware incident? These are not technical questions. These are executive level questions. And so we work and suggest to executives that they should be working through simulation exercises and planning. We call those uh, tabletop exercises from war games, really uh, literal war games, uh, but they are, elements for C-suites to work with uh, outside counsel, with PR firms, with forensic firms and understand how they would respond and work through that. And that creates a muscle memory that is invaluable during a true crisis of being hit by a cyber attack. Yeah, it's really interesting when you think of it through that lens where it's not simply an IT function, but really something that is part of the core strategy for uh, any company, particularly in these times, even with the government guidance that was put out there. Let's drill down a little bit more What's the potential for hackers to target individuals and extort us for our data? Do they, do they care that much? Are they only focused on companies or do individuals have to think about this risk as well? Uh, absolutely, individuals as well. Look, uh, sophisticated hackers uh, made about $350 million from ransomware of companies in the last year alone by tracking back cryptocurrency. That's what the industry has told us. But they're still going after individuals. Crypto lockers on our computers have been hitting us for years. It's just a lot less in the news nowadays because of $50 million, $10 million payments to, from companies. But they're still out there. You're, you get your computer, you turn it on, and all of a sudden, you no longer can access your computer, your data. And it says, unless you pay a few thousand dollars, we're not going to give you access to your stuff. That could be critical. People are working from home. They have some real documents at home. They've got their life photos at home. That's worth thousands even more to many people, and you need to protect that. So people should be alert to that. You shouldn't click on emails. You, you should make sure that you've updated your antivirus software. You should make sure that you have a backup and that that backup gets removed from your computer, right? So it's, it's $100, it's less than $100 to get one of these backup drives. 
do the backup and then unplug it so that when you get hit by a crypto locker, which is essentially a low version of ransomware, you have a backup that is not also infected. Uh, and it's important to take these steps. So, Eris, uh, turning back to the, the company equation here, should a company get hacked? Is there anything that they can do to recover from this? Is this more common than we actually hear in the news or financial media? Um, do you help them get back on track? I realize some companies that get hacked and get extorted, they just might be too small to recover from it. But, you know, even from a reputational perspective, it, it, it could take a hit from it. Yeah, Jill, you hit it, the nail right on the head. Uh, reputational issues become the key issues. So it is indeed my role to help companies uh, evaluate these issues and recover from them. Uh, and we bring in and work immediately with PR firms because it is so immediate a reputational question. Uh, think about the fact that the first 24 hours you might be trying to scope what happened, what's been hit, what data is at stake, what, should we pay ransoms, questions along those lines. But the moment you move off those first 24 hours, it's all about how do you deal with customers, with the press, with your regulators, and with the public at large? And what does that say about your company? And that's how companies are evaluated. Uh, we all hold companies uh, to task or take them to task for what their response is like. Is it a good response or not? Because we accept that ransomware might happen, that even the top most secure companies nowadays can get hacked. The Pentagon can get hacked, companies can get hacked. We accept that. What we don't accept anymore is, is a bad response, companies that aren't ready. And, and the press uh, kills them, and rightfully so, that we should all be prepared for that. So I think it is really critical to think about that side. Companies that are prepared, they already know what they're going to say because they've said the three most likely cyber incidents that come to us are ransomware, a data breach, and maybe an insider. And we're going to have uh, our PR set ready for all three of those scenarios. We're gonna have a site ready to go up that explains what happened, that will be tweaked for the facts, but it'll explain what happened and it explains that today, it's ready right now. Uh, we're gonna know what we're gonna tell our third parties and that's ready right now because we're thinking through who those third parties are and what we're gonna tell them. And we're gonna know how we're gonna interact with our regulators, frankly, because we're talking to them now and thinking through these issues uh, in the cyberspace, regulators are really working with companies to try and make a safer space for all of us together. And so it is important to talk to regulators well before breach and, and plan together. Talk about an exercise in crisis comms. Eris, appreciate the insight. Thanks for joining us on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Thank you.